Hello and welcome. Dr. John Stape risked his life to test the effects of acceleration and deceleration on the human body in order to improve aircraft ejection seats. Using a rocket sled, Stape served as his own guinea pig, accelerating for six seconds with a brutal stop that took less than two seconds. When asked why he would suffer cracked ribs, broken wrists, and retinal hemorrhages for Tata, he simply said, I have a missionary spirit. When asked to do something, I do it. I took my risks for information that will always be of benefit. Risks like those are worthwhile. Who was this man? John Stape was born in Brazil to American parents. He graduated with a bachelor degree, a PhD in biophysics, a master's degree in zoology, a medical degree, and an honorary doctorate of science. This man was intelligent and driven to succeed. In October 1944, he enlisted in the US Army Medical Corps, completing the Medical Field Services School and School of Aviation Medicine. In 1946, Dr. State became a research officer in the Aeromedical Laboratory at Wright Field. He became convinced that a significant pattern lay behind the way some Air Force men died whilst others survived seemingly equal violent crashes. He set out to discover the reasons by using a high-speed sled at Muroc Air Base to test high rates of acceleration and deceleration on the body. First, he had to develop a harness to hold the subject in a sled. There were failures. The sled was powered by JATO rockets gliding on a 2,000 foot long track and had a very effective braking system. After 32 test runs using a dummy, in December 1947, he chose to make the first ride. He was strapped in, facing aft. The rockets fired. The sled sped off, reaching 90 miles per hour, and came to a violent halt, producing 10G on his body. He said it was an easy first ride. Within a year, Stape had made sled runs at speeds of up to 150 miles an hour, stopping in as little as 19 feet. He withstood forces 35 times that of gravity and proved that the human body can withstand such forces, though with consequences. Stape suffered headaches, concussions, a fractured rib and wrist, and hemorrhaged retinas. He said the men at the mahogany desks thought that the human body would never take 18 Gs. Here we're taking twice that with no sweat. Stape concluded that crash survival does not depend upon a body's ability to withstand the high forces involved, but rather on its ability to withstand the mangling effects of the vehicle in which it is housed. To validate these conclusions, State again unofficially began tests on humans and by 1948 had made 16 sled runs facing aft. That is not so good for pilots who must obviously face forward. In another 26 high-speed test runs, Stape lost six fillings from his teeth, cracking several more ribs and breaking his wrist a second time. When Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier, it brought new problems, as escape from supersonic aircraft is extremely dangerous. To conduct this new research, Stape headed an aeromedical field laboratory established at Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico. A higher speed sled called Sonic Wing No. 1, containing a more sophisticated data recording and water braking system, was made. In March 1954, in his first ride on the new sled, Stape attained 421 miles per hour and was called the fastest man on earth. His greatest concern became the need to protect Air Force pilots bailing out of their supersonic aircraft. Before ejection seats could be perfected, State recognised the need to know the maximum stress that a pilot could endure. 
On December the 10th, 1954, Stape sat down in a sled chair that simulated an ejection seat. He wore a special crash helmet and his body was lashed to the seat. His wrists were tied together in front of him. The sled leapt forward as if shot from a cannon. Stape slammed against the seat with a force that threatened to crush his bones and his vision blurred before he blacked out. The sled braked to a stop in 1.25 seconds as the 46 G forces tried to break the restraining harness. His lungs collapsed and his eyeballs bulged from their sockets. When crewmen rushed forward to free Stape from the sled, he mumbled, I can't see. Stape was rushed to the hospital and his eyesight gradually returned. Doctors found that he had suffered no major injury. Amazing. Stake not only set a ground speed record of 632 miles per hour, but withstood the wind blast experienced by pilots bailing out at 1,000 miles an hour at 35,000 feet and proved an ejection seat can be used at supersonic speeds. He was called one of the bravest men in the world and honoured for his deeds. This was the last of Stapes' 29 sled runs. The Air Force loaned Stape to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration in 1967. Stape realised that his research was just as applicable to cars as it was to aircraft. Automobile safety was even more important because more humans are involved in car crashes than there are pilots crashing or ejecting. In every interview and at every appearance thereafter, Stape urged Detroit to examine his crash data and to design their cars with safety in mind. He lobbied hard for the installation of seat belts. At that time, not even an option on American cars and improvements such as soft dashboards, collapsing steering wheels and shock absorbing bumpers. He said, I'm leading a crusade for the prevention of needless deaths he told Time magazine in 1955. It was Volvo, not the Detroit car makers, who introduced seat belts in 1959 as standard equipment. American Nash Motors had offered seat belts as an option since 1949, but they weren't popular. A skeptical public was told they may cause internal injuries. Many said the decision to use a seat belt should be personal rather than a legal aid. As long as the life risk is my own, I believe the individual should decide whether or not the use of safety belts is wise. Door latches can accomplish this without preventing speedy escape from an auto going into a stream or catching fire, which are not infrequent events. Some car owners cut the seat belts out of their cars in 1966, President Lyndon Johnson, with Stape at his side, signed a law requiring seatbelts in all new cars in America. Besides seatbelts, safety helmets are a proven technology designed to protect the head and face, yet not universally adopted. Kind of like where seatbelts were in the 1950s. In 2022, whether to wear a helmet is a personal choice in Illinois, Iowa and New Hampshire. Stapes' work in aeronautics and automobile safety continued right up until his death in 1999 at the age of 89. Thank you for watching. Please comment, like and subscribe to promote content.